Hi everybody and welcome to the Frank Nut Sewing Machines YouTube channel. We're here in our Birmingham store. My name's Lucy and I'm the shop manager here. And we're going to have a look at the Brother PR and VR range and we're going to take a really in-depth look at the 680W. But first of all, we thought we'd run through the range of machines available. These are the professional embroidery machines and some of them are multi-needle. First of all, we have the VR in the range, which is a single needle machine. This has got a maximum embroidery area of 30, um, 20 by 20 centimetres. Then we have the 680W, which is what we're going to look into a bit more detail today. Um, and this has got the six needles as per the kind of numbering on the, uh, br on the model. Um, so you can actually use six colours in a design without having to stop and change a colour. It can do obviously designs of more colours, but you then have to adjust, but we will go through all of that. Um, the maximum hoop size on that model is 20 by 30 centimetres. We've then got the 10 needle machine. So again, it's really similar to the six, it's just it's more needles. So you can do a design up to 10 colours without having to stop and change at all. The maximum embroidery size on here is 36 by 20, and it does also have a scanning facility and camera built into the machine. So as you can see, we've got a full range, so you're very welcome to come and make an appointment to come and see some of these, and we can talk through the models with you. Um, we offer full training and delivery as standard with any um, of these machines, so uh, come at us with that. Um, so we're going to take now a more in-depth look at the 680W. Okay, so we're going to run through everything that comes with the machine um, that you get inside the box when you first receive your model. Um, so we've got all the different frames that come with the machine. We've got four included. So running from the small one, which is six by four centimeters. We've then got a 10 by 10 centimeter, the 18 by 13 centimeter, and the largest one, which is 30 centimeters by 20. So all of these frames, the standard ones that come with it, uh, attach onto frame holder A, which is included. Um, any additional frames that you purchase may use frame holder B, which is also comes with the machine. So you do get that to actually attach on some of the other frames. You also get all the grid guides to go with those um, hoops, which are going to help you with positioning and marking when you've hooped up different, different fabrics. The cable for computer connectivity, I mean, that's a bit of an optional, you don't have to use that because it does now have the Wi-Fi, which we can talk about in a bit. Um, and then the accessory box, so in here is everything you need to maintain and manage your machine. Spool nets and spool caps um, for kind of thread ma management, making sure that you're, um, and little foam pads as well for all of the needles. Little seam ripper is a bit of a courtesy, <laughs> just in case. This screwdriver can basically maintain the entire machine, which is really handy. You've got your oiler, um, little embroidery scissors, which are really lovely and sharp, which um, is great for trimming off any bits. Um, you've got a little weight, which is for testing the, um, the tension of the bobbin case. A little spacer, which you use with the cap frame and some of the other frames, but it'll tell you when you do need to put that on. The small screwdriver for um, some of the, the needles, actually I think that one's for the needle as well, a little Torx one. Um, tweezers for helping threading. This little tool, which is really useful for um, threading the actual top thread guide, which we'll go through shortly. Spanner for tightening up different sections um, when needed. Another little screwdriver, which is for like kind of the um, needle plate. Brush and stylus, so you can use this for actually using the screen. You also get two packs of needles and I think six, um, or five, or five of the pre-wound bobbins as well. So you're all ready to go. Everything you need to get going is in the machine, um, apart from threads. But when we kind of set up and um, install a machine, we generally bring a bit of a demonstration pack as well. So we never, we, you know, you're all ready to go when, once we've been in installed. Okay, so now we're going to thread up the machine and go through how that works, basically, because we have got six needles that looks a bit daunting to start off with, but it really isn't that bad. Um, but first we'll start off with the bobbin. Um, so when the machine first comes, we've got an empty bobbin case and it's just located right at the bottom of this lovely slim free arm. So in your box, you have got a load of pre-wound bobbins ready for you to have a go with. And these are the MagnaCore Brother pre-wound bobbins. So we're just going to remove the bobbin case using the lever. That should come out quite easily. And we'll pop the um, MagnaCore bobbin in with that magnet facing inwards. So whenever you, and any pre-wound bobbin that you use, make sure that when you pull the thread through and into the tension, 
that it is then spinning clockwise. Then going to pop this back onto the spindle. You can either use the lever here or just push it on. It's up to you. You can kind of get it in there and then make sure it really is in there. If you do use the lever, it doesn't do a click, but if you don't use the lever, it does an extra little click. And do make sure that it is in there. I'm just going to trim the um, bobbin thread down to about 10 centimetres just so it sits neatly in the bobbin case area and that will get picked up. So I'm then gonna, I've got a set of threads here that we've chosen um, that I'm just going to thread. So we'll go through one of them slowly and then I think we're going to speed up all the rest because it's not that exciting to watch. So I'm going to start over here at thread number one. The threads all have to run off directly vertical to the first thread guide. So always coming straight up. Then this one's coming across to this first kind of tubular one. I just need to get my head around here a little bit. <laughs> I need to get underneath. <laughs> just so I can see the entry point. There we go. And then again through this tube here as well. Now you'll quickly get used to all of these little bits underneath the first kind of pretension unit clips in underneath there and then we're going to go all the way around this tension disc first of all these are all numbered so one two three four five six then we're going to kind of follow these um, printed kind of raised sections on top of the casing around the little um, pinpoints pull it a little bit of excess through to make it a bit easier for us and we're going to go underneath this is where it's a little bit more like a sewing machine but not everybody may have used one before underneath and then up to the take-up link here so the take-up lever even and that goes actually th threads through a hole there then we've got another set of numbers here so we're all going through everything that's number one at this stage so I'm going to drop that in through that hole and it will appear at the bottom here. Oh, it's a little bit springy if you pull it too taut. So um, we then just need to engage the needle threader. And this is where I said about this little tool that's in the box that's really, really handy. It's for threading above this guide here to the, the, the thread guide that's just above the needle. So you can use it to get right up to that guide very easily. You can also then use it to go into the needle threader which is underneath both of those prongs into the the flappy bit that's next to the foot up and over to the trimmer and once that's trimmed off you then press your needle threading button again and the thread is stays up and into the back out of the way and is threaded through the needle. So I'll just do that with thread number two Definitely need to come around this side for that one. Through these tubes. Through there. And underneath that pretension one. It's got a slightly different thread path. You've just got to make sure that you're following the directions for each individual thread. And around the tension disc completely and then behind all of these different little pins underneath that flap there down and under Ooh. might need to trim that off because it's a bit of a raggedy end there we go you have got the tweezers also that you can use to help you don't be shy and use them and again down into hole number two now okay and now just use our little tool again for the top of the thread guide and to get to the next needle to actually thread it there's a button on screen so I've got one selected there, I want to take number two, so it shuffles over there, needle threader button, 
and then needle threader again. Okay, so we're just going to follow this along. So now we've got all the colours that we um, have got on our specific design that we're going to do today um, all threaded up. Um, so we're just going to have a look at hooping up the fabric because we need to show some of the pin some of the other features off. But we need to have some fabric under there in order to show those. So for those of brand new to embroidery, you always have a stabilising fabric such as this. This is a medium weight tear away stabiliser underneath your fabric that you're actually embroidering onto. You may need to have um, stabiliser on top as well, depending on if it's a knit, but this is a woven material, so we're quite confident this will come out nicely on this. So with these hoops, um, the PR hoops, you've got the small outer frame, and that's going on first, then your stabiliser, and then your fabric. This then pushes kind of into the middle of that. So this is the inner frame going on top. So you see this is on the outside behind. I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. Then I'm going to ease the fabric in a bit more and make sure the stabiliser is nice and taut as well, just by gently pulling. And this will be different for all different materials and it's all very much a, a learning curve for different fabrics. Keep tightening that up. Give it another little There we go. Push that outer hoop on and give it another tighten. So we want these to all be really nice and taut like a drum and so it should be really nice and smooth and fairly tight. I'll just give that another little squeeze. Okay, the hoop then slots onto the machine with the frame holder on. That's what we need to put on first. There's always an order to do these things because obviously it's not attached when you first get it. So the frame holder A, which we looked at in the included accessories, it's got two little holding screws here. So you do just need to undo those first of all. Oops. And then slot this on. So we want to be really careful not to bash any of the feet when we're pulling these um, Oh, sorry, sliding these frame holders on and off. And it's got a little location section just there. there. So it's got a little um, clip that goes into a hole on the actual machine itself. And then the screws screw it down into position. Ooh. And so once this is on, we can see the hoops on screen now and it'll default to um, the widest setting because that's what we've got this on at the moment. So we'll just set this up. So the hoop that we've got at the minute is the 10 by 10 centimetre that we're working on. And we can see at the minute that it's a bit wide to take that. So we just need to bring that in a couple of notches. So I'll just undo the screw, the big screw at the side and make sure that the other secondary one is a bit loose. And then you're able to slide it in until you have it at the correct width, which is going to be another notch. There we go. And then tighten these up. Because that sensor will then tell the machine which hoop size we have. Once they're on, now we can slot it in. Again, just be careful of the feet. Um, you don't want to be pushing or pulling. If there's any resistance, just check. And these, all these hoops that come with the machine slide on and locate in the same way, kind of snap into position. Great. So now we're ready to kind of um, to look at a design on screen and, and set something up. This little box has appeared on there, which is our kind of embroidery area that it knows because we've got this hoop on that we are working on a 10 by 10 kind of frame. Uh, so in here we've got Loads of little built-in designs. I'm just going to have a quick look at the little mushroom here. I'm just going to set that in there. So um, when you've chosen a design, you've got lots of different things that you can actually do to it. You can change the size, um, normally by about 10% on built-in designs. 
got the rotation so we can flip it around depending on what direction your garment is. If you have an item in there, you might be embroidering onto it upside down. You might need to take that into consideration. Flipping the design is really easy as well. And we've got the colors. So this is one of the, obviously the beauty of this six needle machine is that we're not gonna have to stop and change a color every time. Especially with this design, it's only got five colors. So it's gonna be able to do the entire thing without actually having to stop. We can adjust these and change these colors to be anything that we want. Um, there is also this color shuffling as well, which can give you lots of different options of um, just a bit of inspiration really. So if we were to choose a kind of style such as soft, it's gonna give us this lovely range of different tonal, soft, um, basically color options. And you can then pick one of those if you'd like to set it. You can look at it big on the screen as well. Set that in there so it's changed all the colors now. So it's got a different selection that we, that we wants us to put on the machine. Just gonna press okay on there for the moment. We've also got this funky little badge making facility so um, you can choose a distance, how far away the applique badge is going to be, um, if it's going to follow the contour of your design or whether it'll be a circle or a square. So if it was to follow the contour and was four millimetres away, if I just press set there, it gives you an example of how that looks. So it's like instant little badges, which is quite nice. Um, we got undo and redo, so I'm just going to undo that for now <laughs> so that we can also have a quick look at the stippling. This is um, an automated feature where you can actually stipple around a design or lettering, whatever it is that you want to actually um, fill a kind of area with. Really good for kind of quilting and things. I'm going to cancel that. So if we then go to edit end, what this is then going to do is um, take us onto a different screen where we can do things like positioning and um, things like that. Um, and you get the crosshairs that's going to show in the middle of the screen, in the middle of your hoop, sorry. If you can see that, so this is one of the largest crosshairs on the market, the laser pointer, so that you can see exactly where a design is lining up from. If we then go through to embroidery, it's also going to ask us to kind of change all these colours because the machine knows what colours it wants to do for this design. So in the spirit of making our videoing as simple as possible, we're going to actually pick a design that we've got all these colors for and show you how that kind of works. We have actually got here anchored on number six, one of, the, um, one of these colors, which is this blue. And so it has asked us to change all of those threads apart from that one, because we've decided to anchor that thread. And anchoring a thread means that you can actually keep it, um, if it's something you use regularly, for example, black and white or something like that, something you're gonna use all the time, you can have some big spools on there and keep them there and they won't get asked to be changed basically when doing another multicolored design. So I'm just gonna close that and um, go back to the home screen and go to the design that we've done. So we've done a little kind of, one of the mushrooms but we've added on some text and we've um, shaped the text around it. Which I don't think we actually went through, did we? It's very easy to do. So if you were to add something, like lettering, you've got loads of fonts in here. You can actually just select one of those. We can add in something. And go to the array and bend things around. It's really quite intuitive the way that these work and then once you've got them on your screen you can move them around as individuals. I can also move these around as individual items as well. You can carry on adding to your design just because we've pulled this one from the memory it doesn't mean that we can't alter it and change it you can keep adding to it and doing different things so we're just going to select the one that we've added on and delete that one for now because we're going to work with this design that we have on currently. That just about fits into our hoop here into the 10 by 10. So if we go to the edit end, we can then have a quick look at the um, how to actually get a really accurate positioning using the crosshairs on here. So this is a, a pinpoint placement facility that is new onto the 680W. So we're actually going to set a corner. Uh, for example, the top left, you can choose the bottom left or even um, a center point on one of the sides there. Um, pressing next, you can then choose a direction that you want to align it to. So if you've got a fabric with a pattern on or you're wanting to, it to embroider above a pocket, um, you can easily set a direction. 
we then press next, we're looking at the crosshair at that point number one. That's what that reference is. So if I need that to be in a slightly different place, I can marginally move it up and down and I can see exactly where that point is going to be on the hoop. Once I then press next, this is now the end point. And again, I can shuffle that around to be exactly where I want. And on here, we haven't really got any tech stripes or anything that we want to align it to or anything like that, but that's what you could use it for aligning onto a pattern that's already on the fabric or to avoid or include certain other elements on the garment that you're stitching onto. Then we press set and we're nearly ready to embroider. So I'm going to look at the embroidery screen. It's going to ask us to change some colours around because I've just threaded these on to the various needles, not necessarily in a particular order. And it thinks that we're, because we had a look at a, a, an embroidery design previously, it thinks it automatically defaults that that's what colours we already set on there. Now it happens to be that it has, even though we put these on in a random order, that's kind of, oh actually no, it, it's not got, yeah, so number two and four, if you see there, we haven't got the right colours there. So I'm going to close that there. And instead of actually re-threading the machine, which is one option, you can actually swap the colours on the needles. So if I go to the swapping here, I can select two and four and change those around. So now it's going to go to the yellow on number two and the orange on number four. And that's then going to sew in the right order basically. The machine is currently set on the fastest setting, um, so it is going to be quite noisy to start off with. You've got complete control over that and you can even set different speeds for different needles if you're using delicate threads such as metallics on a specific needle when you're anchoring it you can actually set the speed on that needle too. Which is a bit strange you have to press lock to actually unlock the machine in order for it to begin embroidering. So we'll get that going now and see if we can get this uh, show a couple of thread changes.
there we have it. So I'll just press OK on there. So we've got a fully completed design um, with, just gently bring that off the hoop, with uh, no jump stitches to trim, everything where it should be, and we haven't had to stop and change the threads at all. There is a um, stitch monitor app available, which I think we did mention earlier on. However, unfortunately, uh, we've been having trouble with getting like, connected because we're about as far away from the router as humanly possible in this old building. So it's not connecting at the moment, but we will be doing a separate video on how to get that Stitch Monitor app working because um, it means that you can be in a separate room and have it on your phone. Just to, It's just a little app that shows you how um, the machine's getting on, basically, what colours it's on, which sti how many stitches, how long it's going to be, and will it alert you if there is any problem with any thread breakage as the machine would do normally, but obviously we haven't had any problems. There shouldn't be too many problems with the machine, but um, we will do that on a separate video. So good news, the Wi-Fi has just started working. So we are actually able to show you the stitch monitoring app. So um, as you can see, the app screen has actually got the design that we have selected. Um, it's automatically picked it up. So on here, we can look at how long it's going to take, the number of stitches that this design is and how many colors. We've also got the thread colour list. This is able to, um, you know, it's just really clear. You can see exactly where everything is. And um, if there is a thread breakage, it pops up on here. So obviously you don't have to be this close. The point of it being is that you can do this in another room or in the kitchen or wherever and just have it by your side so that it's um, ready so that you can check on your design. So uh, we're going to have a look at some of the additional accessories that go with this machine, um, some of the popular ones that people often purchase with the machine or maybe shortly after, um, because there's so much that you can do with a model like the PR680W. So we've just got some of the additional little bits and bobs that people um, do find we find really popular to go with a machine like this. Um, one of the additions, and you'll see it on our website as an actual bundled product, is a cap frame. And so this is what it kind of looks like. It can actually you hoop up a cap on the round um, using this mounting jig. And then this is the frame holder that you actually put onto the machine. And then this is the cap frame. And then you can actually embroider onto here. I think the 680W can do a maximum embroidery width on a cap of 13 centimetres, 13 by 6. And um, there is a new cap frame as well available, which is um, can accommodate flat brim caps a lot better, but it can also do peaked caps too. It's called the universal scratch-free cap frame. But that's now available too as a bundle. It's a little bit more expensive than that, but check out our website for the most up-to-date prices and information. Um, now this isn't available as a bundle, but it is a really popular choice. It is the small frame set. So this is a set of four really teeny individual little frames. And it means that you can actually, um, it comes with a separate frame holder again that they slot into on the machine. They kind of lift up and slot in. Ooh, it's easier to do it when it's on the machine. <laughs> but they, um, it can means that you can embroider onto things, really small items like socks, or um, very tiny tubular items basically, because it enables you to kind of go right around that free arm. Another one, well, we've got two types of the clamp frames. There is the um, clamp frame M, which is a 10 by 10 centimeter one. And this pops up here and it's got a really lovely soft touch um, facing so that it won't cause any marks or hoop burn at all on delicate fabrics or even things like vinyl and leather, suede, things like that. And it ratchets down so for hooping up it's really quick because you don't have any of that pulling it around the hoop. You do still have to get it taut but it's mainly it's the clamping down. And that's similar with an item like this. Um, this particular frame is really designed for much thicker materials like leather, especially like belts or shoes. Um, it can accommodate really thick items in there. Obviously, it's a very small hoop frame here. It's only a few centimetres. But um, for things personalising, things like shoes and other things, it's really ideal because it can just get into little nooks and crannies like tongues and sides of shoes. So these are all a few different bits that are available. Bits are being added all the time by Brother. They've also got some new magnetic hoops, which will be worth a look at but um, our website is kept up to date with all the most recent available accessories. So just a few notes about maintenance of a machine like this, because obviously it could be working quite hard for your business, so um, you need to keep it in tip-top condition. Um, first of all, when it comes to stitch quality, needles are really important, and um, so changing those quite frequently is going to, they are a consumable item. Thankfully, on screen, we've got loads of really handy videos about how to do all of these different things. So. Um, 
you really can't go wrong with uh, how to change all the needles and things. It's got lots of really good detail on there. When it comes to other maintenance, um, definitely keeping the machine clean. So brushing out the bobbin area, removing the bobbin, um, also removing the needle plate and brushing out underneath there. There's lots of information in the manual about that. It's also got um, oiling points as well, um, as you can see on the inside of the bobbin cover. And every time you turn the machine on, it actually does say to oil the machine. I mean, it need to actually oil the hook about every eight hours of sewing. So it might not be every single time you turn the machine on. So do be aware of over oiling as well. There is also oiling at the needle bars. Now there isn't actually a video on this, but it is in the manual. Um, so you would actually um, basically above these needle bars, because these are working really hard, the needle bars here, to um, deliver the, the quality of the stitch. You actually just need to turn the wheel towards you. The hand wheel, there is a hand wheel at the back of the machine. And um, let me just, I think we just need to go to return actually on here. Press OK on the screen. So I'm in an actual thing. There we go. And it should, there we go. It's bringing that down all the way. So just above here, there is a felt pad. Um, and it's just at that point there that there just needs to be a couple of drops of oil um, to keep those needle bars lubricated. There is servicing that um, can be undertaken by trained staff like ourselves. Um, at 500 hours is the full service. Within the machine there is a stitch counter um, and an hour counter as well. So you're able to see whereabouts you are with that. So this hasn't done any full hours of sewing yet because it's our demo model. But um, yeah, once that gets to kind of um, 500 hours, that is when it is due a kind of a full, full service. At 150 hours, there is a mini service that can be undertaken as well. But um, once you reach that, just get in touch with us and we can let you know um, it can be brought into us as well. We're here to support and so um, that's what we, we offer. So delivery and installation we normally undertake um, with you. We um, deliver via van normally. Obviously there is a limit to how um, far we can do a, a delivery. So um, if you are kind of in the furthest reaches of Scotland or down in the depths of Cornwall, then do just get in touch so that we can arrange something with you. There is other options. We can deliver via pallet and um, we do have set up videos as well where you can actually set a machine up yourself because it's fairly straightforward. But in a standard delivery that we can offer to most customers, we do setting up of the machine and also a kind of run through, make sure the machine's stitching with you and answer any questions on the spot. We also have the amazing ability of FaceTime and WhatsApp calling and things like that now. So we can often do um, a lot of training um, virtually as well, if should any extra additional training be needed, or you'd be more than welcome to come and visit us in our Birmingham store. So with that, if you would like to come and make an appointment to view one, um, which we would strongly recommend and have a go for yourself, then uh, just get in touch with us at the shop. As you can see, we've got the full range and it's ready and waiting here to um, be demonstrated to you. Um, you can give us a call beforehand. We can answer an awful lot on the phone. Um, so uh, yeah, we hope to speak to you soon. And if you do have any specific questions, pop them in the comments and we will do our very best to answer them. Thanks very much for now and we'll see you in the next one.